Not trying new Fogo briquettes would be a huge mistake. We showed you a low and slow. We did a hot and fast indirect. Today we're gonna cook a steak direct over these babies. Make sure that we get a good sear, make sure they can get hot enough. So, I wanna cover a couple things about these first. So, let me tell you a little something about our briquettes. The first thing we should talk about is the construction. What are they made out of? Our briquettes are way different because they're actually made from coconut shells, the husks of coconuts. That's what they're made out of. No sawdust, no filler, no anything. They are 100% made of coconut shells. Pretty cool, right? The second thing we can talk about is the binders. Normally in a briquette, they use waxes and all kinds of nasty fillers like that. No, no, not in Fogo All Natural briquettes, no. We use natural vegetable oil, and that's what holds our, our briquettes together. They're all natural, there are no, there's nothing in here that is not natural. They are 100% pure and just ready to go, and that helps them create a perfect flavor and burn long and slow. So you know what that means for you? No chemicals, all natural, and it's gotta be better for you. Better tasting too. The main reason I wanted to cover all of that is because we made a couple videos already, and a lot of the comments have been, Oh, does it, what about briquettes? Can, they're gonna stink up my big green egg. Are there chemicals? There's a lot of questions. A lot of people wanted to know. So I wanted to make sure that you have all the answers. Now you have them. Let's get started with some cooking, shall we? Grilling, that's what we're here for today. In our first couple videos that we made on the briquettes, uh, they were both indirect, all right? This is for you. You guys asked, can you cook direct with these briquettes? Is it gonna work? We are gonna cook this beautiful cowboy tomahawk in the big green egg direct over our beautiful coconut shell briquettes. You know why? Because you asked. You asked, we wanna tell you. So let's load some charcoal in this beauty and get it lit. Now, this is not the normal way that I would cook a big fat steak like this. Normally I would do it indirect. We put a deflector in here, the convector, and we cook it indirect, but I wanted to show you, because you asked, I wanted to show you direct cooking on a big fat steak, how you can cook it evenly, how you can get a beautiful char, because the char is the star, baby, and how you can get a perfect steak direct over our coconut shell briquettes. You know, I've always been showing you how I like the grill. I use my blazer ball, I use our fire starters, but you can just use the torch too. It works great with the briquettes. So just turn it on, fire it up, and light them up. One thing I want to reiterate is always, in a big green egg, no matter what charcoal you're using, no lighter fluid ever. Now the grill is lit, so let's talk turkey. No, let's talk steak, all right? We got this beautiful cowboy tomahawk steak. It's simply a ribeye with the bone still in, the rib bone still in. So, a couple little things to look for. You got the beautiful eye right here, rib eye. And the outside here is called the spinalis dorsi. It's called the chef's choice. Possibly the most tender, most flavorful bite on the steak. So, today we're gonna do a couple real simple things for you here. We wanna keep this simple. I just wanna display how we can cook live, direct over the briquettes. So we're gonna tie this, we're gonna season it simply with salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic salt, because you know me, I love that garlic, baby. I'm sure that most of you know this already, but we put our seasoning on. Now we're gonna let that sit for about 15, 20 minutes like that to let those juices come up out of the steak, grab the seasoning, pull it back down into the steak. We want that center to have some nice flavor too. So that's gonna work out well. Also, this steak has been sitting out for almost an hour. So it's at room temperature already, so it's gonna make the cooking a lot more evenly. Now we got our fire burning right where we want it. So we're gonna have our dome open, so I'm actually gonna close the bottom vent so that we're not feeding it more air and building up even more. And now, on to the grill. All right, we got direct going here, so we're gonna keep flipping it. We're gonna flip this a lot, all right? Doesn't look like it need to be flipped yet, but because we're on such a direct flame, we gotta keep flipping it. If you start to get your flame too high, the beautiful part about a big green egg, if the flame gets too much, just shut the dome for a minute. It'll make for a really nice flame and an even burning fire and no burnt crust. And don't forget, when you open it back up again, burp it because we do have a fire. We don't wanna get a fireball. Now, one thing's for sure, there's not a lot of flames right now. I kind of dampened it down, but if you have a lot of flames, you know, you can take it and just move it to a spot here. There is no lit coals under this, so it's almost like it's cooking indirect here, okay? But you can see we're getting beautiful color on the steak. We've been flipping it a lot. Now I'm just gonna move it over here to the indirect a little bit so that there's no deflector, just no lit coals right underneath it. And just because we're cooking with briquettes does not mean we're gonna change our process. We're gonna let this baby rest for at least 10 to 15 minutes before we slice it. Now, 
Now, if you ask me, I'd say that we nailed this thing. It's a perfect medium rare, and it's tender as can be. It's only a choice steak, but look how juicy that thing was. But now, the more important thing, what we came here for, our briquettes. Give that kick-ash basket a little shake and get all those ashes out of there, and check it out. Strictly a little dusting of ash, that's it. So this coconut briquettes really make a lot less ash, I would say even less than some other lumps out there. Oh, can I say that? And with that, I have one thing left to say. Remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you next time on The Fogo Life.